In the movie Edge of Tomorrow, Mimics are an alien race that use a 24 hour time loop to win every battle they fight against humans. Some of their blood gets into Tom Cruise and he begins to use their time travel powers too. But I've got some questions for the movie. What is a Mimic? Why does it look like that? Specifically the movie, not the manga all you need is kill. Why are the alphas blue? Why does their blood melt Tom Cruise's face off? And how does the blood connect to the glow? I've seen a few Edge of Tomorrow video essays here on YouTube and none of them really go into detail about how the Mimics may have evolved. So I thought someone had to deep dive. Grab some popcorn, cause today we study the Mimics. They're called Mimics because they landed on Earth and they mimicked starfish and frogs, the first organisms they ran into, apparently. It's evident in the comic, but not so much in the movie's final design. However, you can see it in the early concept art phase, which also depicts them as spoopy starfish made of sharp edged glassy armor, which may be a hint to their biology. We get some more information from the original manga, which describes them as silicon based life with insides like sand. So they may be silicon based life forms in the movie too. The second theory is how they glow and move thanks to fiber optic cables. A fiber optic cable nervous system would behoove silicon based life much more than our ooey gooey electrical one. The mimic's nervous system would send photons instead of electrons. Imagine having a reaction time a billion times faster than fleshier organisms. Silicon life visiting earth would need to evolve faster reflexes if their silicon forms turn to stone since their metabolism would slow to a literal rock's pace in oxygen atmospheres. More on that later. Mix could do this if they were made out of metallic spicules, which is already used in nature today. Starfish, the original animals that the mimics well, mimic, already use silica in their bodies. These are called silica megasclears and can be found in many ocean-based life. These fiber optic skeletons directly send light as information. Scientists have found that spicules and megasclears can act like optical fiber. They trap and transport light. They're strong and resist stress. They form their own support structures and even act like eyes. Those glowing peepers on the mimics may be the ends of this spicule skeleton, ending with built-in lenses which gather and focus light in the dark. On Earth, deep sea sponges use spicules to funnel light inside their body. However, there are rules to silicon life forms. One, they're hangry. The mimics probably wouldn't eat us, but they would eat our cities. They may need to eat rocks instead of gross organic stuff, which is good news, I guess. Two, they're slow as molasses. When exposed to an atmosphere, their lifespan and mobility slow down. A fiber optic nervous system would be needed to counteract the fact that they would turn to rock in our atmosphere. They need to go fast or else they're going to be moving at a literal rock space in oxygen since they are more likely to evolve without the hindrance of metal and rocky bodies on their home world they probably look a little gooier on their planet speaking of where is the mimic planet in the manga it says they come from 40 light years away scientists have found three exoplanets that are exactly 40 light years away at least that i found in my limited research lhs 1140b is a super earth with the potential for water and an earth-like atmosphere 55 Cancri E is a diamond planet with an ocean of magma. Trappist 1 E is an extremely hot planet with the potential to be covered in an ocean. The first two planets don't make sense for silicon life, as one is more fit for normal organic life like us, while the other is almost too inhospitable and is much more plentiful in carbon. This makes the most likely candidate that sits 40 light years away Trappist 1 E. Trappist 1E is thought to have an inhospitable atmosphere, at least to humans. It's also so close to its sister planets that any life that would evolve on its surface would see them with their naked eye. These creatures may be naturally curious about the planets around them, and eventually as they reach intelligence, are likely to explore these close by neighbors, especially since rockets could easily reach space thanks to Trappist 1E's atmosphere. This thin, hydrogen rich atmosphere would render the surface extremely hot and unfriendly to normal life, but perfect for silicon. Life. One fact to understand is that in the manga, the mimics are described as drones, a first wave of nanobots that will terraform the earth before the real aliens get there from their homeworld. Their home planet may also explain why they glow blue. Spoiler alert, it's Cherenkov radiation, baby! Circadian rhythms are how animals sense time, and if mimics have the power to change the last 24 hours, then they must have a weird biological clock. On a tidally locked planet like Trappist-1e, they don't have an earth-like day or night cycle. They just have one side of the planet always facing 
their star. So instead of looking at the star or moon to know when to go to sleep, they could sleep and hide from common radiation flares exploding off TRAPPIST-1. These radioactive electromagnetic pulses would affect TRAPPIST-1e, as scientists have found its magnetosphere to not be as strong as Earth. Instead of good night moon, mimics may say good night cycles of powerful radioactive sunstorms. Circadian rhythms and nervous systems are super necessary for complex alien life to evolve. So in order to know when to go to sleep, they might sense these solar storms with blue light. Ancestors of the mimics creators could do this by sensing supercharged particles passing through their bodies just like particle detectors on Earth. These are called neutrino detectors, a huge underwater tank detecting pops of blue light from strange particles called neutrinos. The mimics, or at least their creators, would apply this phenomenon to their biological clock. When there's no radiation, they'd spend their time awake in their version of daytime, but their nighttime would be filled with a bunch of radiation from a solar storm forcing them into a sort of hibernation underground. Sponges have an early stage of their life cycle called gemules that help them survive a hundred times the radiation that humans can. So it's not impossible to imagine a silicon hive of skeleton sponges making a bunch of mimics. The blue glow could come from supercharged particles just like neutrino detectors on Earth. But this also explains how Tom Cruise's face melts off. Water in these giant neutrino observatories is super dissolving, just like the mimic's blood. While they're inside these observatories, scientists' hair can melt off and even their skin can get burned. This is because the huge water tanks are full of an ultra-pure water matrix. It leaches nutrients from hair and dissolves metal. The super-pure water is like acid with features of an alkaline. This makes it possible that the mimics we see bleeding on Tommy Boy are just walking super particle detectors. When neutrinos are sent through water, they can actually move faster than light. Scientists equate these water neutrinos to artificial tachyons. This may be how the mimics send signals to go back in time. Sending these supercharged particles to the Omega hive mind would not only create a glue blow, but use retrocausality to hypothetically send thoughts back in time. Retrocausality is almost completely impossible in real life theoretical physics. However, the mimics may be using something that does exist in nature. Quantum biology. Ant-Man might have ruined the word forever, but quantum biology is like when plants and animals use the laws of physics on a subatomic level in everyday living, like how birds can sense the magnetosphere to migrate. One example that relates to the mimics is the quantum superposition of photons in photosynthesis. Yep, the mimics are just spiky flowers. Leaves need to find the fastest way to send photons through their system to make energy, just like the mimics need to find the most efficient way to defeat humans during battle. In photosynthesis, synthesis, the photon doesn't just move one way and then start over if it gets it wrong. Thanks to quantum superpositioning, the photon physically travels through all possible scenarios at the same time, and when the easiest way is found, the wave function collapses and the plant gets its yummy yummy energy. So perhaps the mimics don't go back in time before a battle they lose, but instead live out every possible outcome until they find a way that most efficiently destroys everything in their path. That's my explanation for why the Omegas glow blue, which perfectly correlates with how they can send thoughts back in time and bleed the face off of Tom Cruise. It's not necessarily canon because no one else is crazy enough to spend this much time researching this sort of thing. However, it makes sense that Cherenkov radiation is the main source of blue light in the mimics, just like our own real-life neutrino observatories, since it has to do with their possible homeworld as well as how they can appear to change time. Thank you for watching, and if you hadn't noticed, we've just hit 100,000 subscribers. I'm filming another video right now where I answer 100 questions for my 100,000 subscribers. This is the main way I make money, so if you guys want to watch some of my other videos, especially the longer ones, it would be a huge help. I'm also going to start thanking my patrons at the end of the videos, so go check out that if you can. Again, anything is super encouraging and pushes me to make more science videos with a bunch of art just for you. Thanks again, and keep an eye out for my next video.